Hi, my name is Natalia Abramowitz. I'm a senior here at Viewpoint, and today I would like to talk to you about NaNoWriMo. No, I didn't stumble over my words. NaNoWriMo is short for National Novel Writing Month. Every year for the past three years, I have participated in an international challenge to write a 50,000 word novel in a month. For those of you unsure of what 50,000 word looks like, it's about 250 pages of your standard book. Admittedly, this sounds somewhat impossible. After all, it takes published authors years to write a book, doesn't it? Well, in the next five minutes, I'm going to tell you how you too could write your very own novel and gain more than just a work of fiction along the way. The first and most obvious question in participating in something like this is why? <laughs> why in the world would you commit an entire month to something this time-consuming, stressful, and seemingly impossible? Well, part of your answer is right there. You do it because it seems impossible. Since the dawn of human existence, we have always loved doing impossible things. From climbing mountains to jumping out of airplanes, we as people love to defy nature and do the impossible. In fact, Walter Baggett said, the greatest thing in life is doing something that other people say you cannot do. You see, for many years, I greatly underestimated the power of doing impossible things. In fact, I don't think I even really tried them that often. But I promise you, when you hit that 50,000 word mark, impossible loses one meaning and takes on another. Instead of being something that dissuades you from failure, it becomes some sort of challenge from the universe designed to egg you on and drive you forward. In fact, impossible loses all semblance of itself and takes on a completely new meaning, where instead of meaning completely against everything you should do, it means possible. And not just possible, but probable. Now, I know what most of you are thinking. I would if I had time, but I have school, work, a life. Well, it wouldn't be a challenge without those things, now would it? We all put things off until the right time. Maybe after I finish my homework, I have a lot to do tonight, probably tomorrow. or. Work is really stressful right now. I'll, I'll wait a couple weeks, and then I'll start. But as cliche as it sounds, there's never going to be a right time. There will always be homework due or work that needs to get finished. And by the time you reach the ends of those tomorrows and next weeks, something else will have already come up. I am the best procrastinator in the world. In fact, they say if you do something for more than 10,000 hours, it makes you an expert. By that standard, I'm probably an expert several times over. Tomorrow is my favorite word. It defines my life. And that's how it was for me in writing for the longest time. Every day, I would get home and make excuses about having too much homework or being too tired. And I would start that poem or write that novel tomorrow. But that never happened. That's where NaNoWriMo comes in. You're starting with thousands of other people just like you. It starts on November 1st, and you better believe that midnight on Halloween, thousands of people all across the world are writing those first few words. Because with an official starting time, there is no tomorrow. In fact, there's barely even a five minutes from now, because with 2,000 words to write a day, you do not want to waste a minute. On top of that, there's the immense amount of discipline that comes with it. Discipline is not exactly a primary attribute of a procrastinator, but suddenly there isn't much of a choice. With homework and other responsibilities that need to be accomplished, it takes an incredible amount of discipline to do all of that and then keep going to write 2,000 words. <laughs> of course, there is the obvious sentiment, I'm probably not going to succeed, so what's the point in trying? We've all felt like this. We've all had that moment where we're like, it's not going to happen. I may as well get some extra sleep and watch cat videos on YouTube. <laughs> I'd be lying if I said I never felt like this. But I know now just how wrong I was. Because even if you just write one sentence during NaNoWriMo, during that entire month, that is still one sentence you didn't have before you started. As any author or physicist can tell you, the best thing you can do is get the ball rolling. 
set something in motion so that you have a little momentum for when you finally hop on board. Because there is no penalty for failing, but there is everything to gain from just trying. Now, you could be thinking that nothing good is written in this short amount of time, and you would be absolutely right. <laughs> but the beauty is not in the writing, it's in the editing. As Nabokov said, I have written, rewritten, often several times, every word I have ever published. My pencils outlast their erasers. And this could not be more true. Your first draft is like the vague outline, maybe even the sharpening of pencils before you start the work of art. But as John Green pointed out, NaNoWriMo gives you permission to suck. <laughs> the worst feeling in writing is when it feels like every word has to be perfect before you can move forward. Well, Nano, NaNoWriMo definitely strips you of that luxury. In fact, there's no time to edit at all. There's really just the complete flow of thoughts that you get out on the page. What you gain from that is this little story that you can mold into what you actually see in your head. And it takes years, but I've been editing my piece for two years, one of my NaNoWriMo's, and I'm self-publishing next month, and had I never written that horrible first draft, the final draft would never have existed. So what I'm saying is, do it. Stop procrastinating, stop coming up with excuses, and just go for it. You have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Thank you.